Hello everyone, and welcome back to Threadbare Reviews. Today's subject is the recommendation of Patron Cronish, who wanted me to take a look at the X-Files TV show. Now the whole run is a bit much for a single review, and so I focused on the first season, which premiered in 1993. The story about the story. The X-Files began with a man named Chris Carter, who started his career working for Surfing Magazine, but eventually got a contract writing TV movies for Disney Studios in the 1980s. He then started getting experience as a producer, working under the wing of a more experienced showrunner named Peter Roth, and in 1992 Carter began to develop a dream project of his. The show would be inspired by other speculative TV shows like The Twilight Zone, and a single-season cult show called Kolchak the Night Stalker, and Carter has also said that he was influenced by the government cover-ups of the Watergate scandal and the iconic attitudes of the protagonists on the English TV show The Avengers. The X-Files had to be pitched twice to Fox before they accepted the idea, but once they did, they ordered a pilot, and then a full 24-episode season. They then put the show in the famous Friday Night Death slot, but it proved so popular despite the time slot that it went on to get nine regular seasons, two movies, two spin-off shows, and a two-season revival that aired from 2016 to 2018. The two primary protagonists are played by David Duchovny as Fox Mulder and Gillian Anderson as Dana Scully. Duchovny was born in New York and was working on a PhD in Princeton University when he left the college to pursue a career in acting. He got his first roles in the late 1980s and, most notably, he played a DEA agent on David Lynch's Twin Peaks. Duchovny was apparently aiming more at a movie career at the time and didn't think the show would go on for very long, but he also was a big influence on Mulder's detached attitude and scientific approach to cases. As for Anderson, she started her career as a stage actor on Broadway, but moved to Los Angeles in 1992 to look for work. She got a guest appearance in 1993 on a show called Class of 96, and after that she auditioned for The X-Files and got the role when Chris Carter insisted on her. For the first five seasons, the show was filmed in Vancouver, partly because it's cheap to film in Vancouver, and partly because the show needed a lot of location shots, and most of those shots had to be in places that are not a desert. Seasons 6 through 9 were filmed in LA and its surroundings, but the show would return to Vancouver for the second movie and the revival series. The X-Files, particularly the early seasons, were incredibly popular with both fans and critics and the show would go on to be just as influential to future urban fantasy and conspiracy works as The Twilight Zone was to The X-Files. Now me personally, I've managed to avoid the show in all its iterations up to this point. So, let's find out what a fresh perspective 27 years later we'll see. The Review Dana Scully is a new recruit in the FBI and her first big assignment is to supervise the more experienced Fox Mulder as he digs through the Bureau's X-Files. The X-Files are cases that were dropped by the Bureau because they contain too many inconsistencies or unexplainable evidence, and the reason Mulder is so interested in these files is because he believes his sister was abducted by aliens when he was a child, and the files might contain the information he needs to find out what happened to her. For her part, Scully is aggressively skeptical of any sort of unusual phenomena, but she assists Mulder's investigations anyway because she also wants to figure out the truth of the matter and bring any criminals involved to justice. X-Files episodes, at least in Season 1, tend to follow one of two formulas, and I'd like to add that I noticed the difference between the two even before I found out that the fandom has specific terms for each one. In mythology episodes, Mulder and Scully investigate a case connected to the government cover-up of extraterrestrial contact, and whatever leads they have suddenly dry up or else Mulder gets roughed up by government goons. Afterwards, a contact known only as Deep Throat says something ominous to Mulder like everything is connected or you'll never be able to stop them. In Monster of the Week episodes, the two agents investigate a local phenomenon that has no connection to anything, but is often inspired by real-life myths and beliefs, such as the Jersey Devil, poltergeists, pyrokinesis, and faith healing. 
They also get inspiration from other films and TV shows, like how Episode 8 is basically a 45-minute recreation of John Carpenter's The Thing. These cases also frequently involve government interference, either from local officials who don't want to disrupt the status quo or other agencies that are running parallel investigations and don't want any interference. And while these episodes are disconnected from the larger plot, they usually end with that overused horror movie stinger, where it turns out that whatever the agents were up against that week is still out there and still dangerous. So, bearing in mind that I only watched the first season and have no plans to watch the rest, I found the Monster of the Week episodes to be much stronger and more interesting than the mythology episodes. With the monster episodes, you get a beginning, middle, and end. And while there's always that horror movie cop-out at the end, the protagonists actually do something useful with their time and take care of the threat. With the mythology episodes, you get a beginning and a middle, but then, instead of the end, there's a government cover-up and nothing actually gets done. You just get a bunch of vague warnings and promises about bigger threats to come. Now, I understand that eventually the mythology plot gets going and the two agents start doing things to actually fight the extraterrestrial threat to humanity, but when taking the first season on its own, I was generally more frustrated than intrigued. As for the main characters, I have to admit that while Duchovny's Mulder seems like a flat wooden character at first glance, he actually displays some very subtle emotional cues that show he's not really emotionless, he's just very bad at sharing his emotions, and probably has been ever since his sister got abducted. That, and the two lead actors had to memorize a lot of very technical lines in a short amount of time, and so an understated performance helped them get through the filming quickly. As far as complaints go, my main issue is with how they're written. Mulder jumps too quickly to the least provable theory, and Scully hangs on too long to the most grounded theory, even after the evidence has ruled it out. But then that's not too much of a complaint, since between the two of them, they make up one actually reasonable scientific perspective. Overall, I'd say that I can definitely understand why the show gathered such a following over the years. Nobody else was doing anything like it at the time. Even Twin Peaks was focused more on local weirdness than on a vast global conspiracy. And while I wasn't personally fond of the mythology episodes, it was much less common at the time for a procedural show like The X-Files to have a long-running storyline that would span the entire run of the show. So while the effects are often dated and the resolutions are formulaic, I would say that the first season, at least, is worth a watch. The Analysis So, obviously, conspiracy is a big running theme for the show, and not just one conspiracy, but several layers of conspiracy, since the protagonists are federal agents who get special access, but then they also get stonewalled or threatened, depending on what they try to investigate. And it's not just the big conspiracy with the aliens, either. The Atlantic City Police bury the Jersey Devil case because the publicity would ruin the city's tourism revenue, and NASA avoids discussing a mechanical failure in the space shuttle because bad press could get the administration shut down. The tagline for the series is, The Truth Is Out There. And while the two protagonists are always searching for the truth, the show seems to be very aware of the fact that the truth can often cause more harm than good at least in the short term. People lie to each other and keep their secrets close to the chest because letting the truth out will hurt them. And while in some cases they deserve to be hurt for what they've done, in other cases the truth can cause people to make bad decisions, to overreact and do something to harm the secret keeper that they don't deserve. Or maybe they'll end up causing harm to themselves. Just because you know one truth now doesn't mean that you'll suddenly know the whole truth, or that you'll know what the right thing to do next is. Nevertheless, this tendency for humans to hide the truth does more to empower harmful people than it does to protect the innocent. Some of the little conspiracies have a point, but the big conspiracy is protecting a secret alien invasion along with a few humans who are enabling the invasion for the sake of their own personal enrichment and protection. 
And even then, the humans involved are probably lying to themselves. Because it seems pretty obvious that the aliens are going to get rid of them the moment they stop being useful. Anyway, the reason Mulder and Scully work well together is because both of them are ultimately truth seekers. They make different assumptions about what the truth could be before they discover it, and they often disagree on what to do with the truth after they find it, but they ultimately want the same thing. Answers. And in a world where society, where humanity itself is built out of layers of lies piled on lies, it can be appealing to watch a TV show that says it's about time we air out all of our dirty laundry. Or at least a show that lets us in on the big secrets, the secrets that all of those ignorant sheeple don't want to know. Because the biggest secret is that the truth can be enticing, especially if the truth is really just a different kind of lie. Thanks for joining me again for today's Threadbare Review, and I hope I'll see you next time. Until then, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and if you have a little extra money to spare, you can support me on Patreon. Link in the description.